thank you for your love. Hallelujah. We lift your name, Lord. We lift your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear you, church. Sing it out. Sing it out. Say, Lord, Hallelujah. we love you. Lord. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your love, your strength, your grace, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for your son. Hallelujah. 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 Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible
Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We put our focus on you this morning. We praise your name, Father God. We worship you in your holy name. We thank you, Father God, for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that resides in each and every one of us today, Father God. I thank you for that right now. Hallelujah. We lift your name, Lord. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Hallelujah. Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We sing, Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is mine. And Jesus, your name will break every stronghold. Oh, Jesus, your name is life. Jesus, your name is power. Is power. Yeah. Jesus, your name is my oh, mighty name of Jesus. And Jesus, your name will break every stronghold. But Jesus, your name is love. You are
where we began, amen. That's what the song was talking about. It's talking about that we all have a journey, we all go through things, but our goal is to be changed and to be better day in day, amen. Day by day, day by day. So we sing it. Change my life, change my heart. I don't want to end at my start. Jesus working me. I want to be where you see me.
lift his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Without him. Without him. Hallelujah. Where would we be without Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift his name, church. Lift his name. Because until you, as Dad Hagen used to say, you can't live until you're ready to die. Amen. Until you settle eternity, you can't really enjoy life here. here. Hallelujah. Thank God Jesus came. Thank God Jesus has given us the opportunity to change life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That is the wildest thing. I don't know if y'all look. My look here, and Nathan looks, looks like a, a bobblehead going back and forth. It's running like 14 times faster than normal. So I don't know what that's about. That's weird. Well, good to see y'all. I'm sorry, I, I got caught up with that. I had to look at that and like, wow. Look at that. <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> look, look, look. It looks like a, like a music video from the 80s. Yeah, look, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if y'all can say that, but that's, that's crazy looking. I don't know what's going on with it. Well, <laughs> hallelujah. Y'all can be seated. Good to see you this morning. Good to have all of our Facebook people. I hope, hopefully, it's just something on my phone, and you guys are actually seeing it at, at more of a regular speed instead of, this is a trip. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm trying to see if they slow down. Now they're moving. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, a couple announcements. Next Sunday is back to school Sunday. So we want you to wear your school colors. Or if you work at a school, you can wear your, the school you work at colors. Um, so your high school colors, your college colors. Wherever, if you work at a particular school, you can wear those colors. Um, and then Jeff and Melanie can wear all kinds of colors. Because they wear all different schools. Hallelujah. Um, you know, my, my school that we're, where I'm at is... Uh, atrocious burgundy and gold now some people that looks good on but when you is when you are dutch iris honkified it just does not look good i mean i, I put that on i'm like oh my goodness you huh, huh? no i can't <laughs> i'm telling you i walk out of the house when i have to wear one of my shirts for school and I, they gave us burgundy last year like with a gold logo on it, but I mean, the burgundy shirt, you're like, I'm like a demic, you know. I mean, I, I, I look in the mirror and I go, be healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But anyway, it's back to school. So whatever you went to high school, wherever you went to college, whatever you, if you work in a school, wear your school colors. The kids can wear their school, want them to wear their school. It's for the kids, but we want to help them, all right? So we want them to all wear their school colors, whatever their school colors are. Um, <coughs> and yes, elementary and, and middle schools have colors. They even have names for their, their non-existent teams. 
They do. So, uh, make, you know, if you're a parent, you don't know color your school, what are, what are our school colors? And uh, bring your kids dressed up like that. And most of them uh, get some, usually we end up getting a, a T-shirt or something that year with the school name on it or whatever. So we want everybody to do that, all right? See, I'm so old, I don't remember what my school colors are. Come on. Come on now. You remember, don't you, Melanie? Mm-hmm. What? You drive for the same school, so you got the same, you, you still get to wear the same color. Look at this in the Melanie. Hallelujah. All righty. So that's, that's next Sunday is back to school Sunday. And then the first Sunday of November, everybody say the first Sunday of November. Um, we'll be, we're, now listen, if something comes up between now and then, we'll, we, but this is not, this is pretty much, we're going to just go ahead and put this in granite, okay? Uh, it is going to be our Down East barbecue uh, after a two-year delay because we didn't do it last year. If y'all remember, I went in the hospital right before it happened last year, and so we never, we didn't do it. And um, we were, I know y'all were disappointed. I was disappointed. I was going to actually try to get out and do it. I really was, but I, I, I got... I got overrode. Yeah. My wife told me no. But, 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 no. I got, I got no. I did get out of the hospital on a um, Friday and drive over to my school to check on my student. Yeah, I drove straight to the school to check on my student. Yeah. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Uh, cause, huh? That's called special. I'm special. Okay. Because, you know, you just need to make sure he was on task. Hallelujah. Anyway, praise the Lord. This year we're going to do it. Now, we're talking about doing a Gibson Park. Um, I, I do want to discuss with our, our people um, that is further away from my house. So cooking the chicken and stuff and getting it over is going to be a longer haul. So what do you all think? you think the old Jamestown Park setup is okay? Or you all really like Gibson Park a lot? What do you all think about Gibson Park? Huh? What's what, what? Gibson Park? Okay. All right. What, Jesse? She like, well, now Jesse's sentimental. <laughs> All right. Um, it is, it's about three times as far as far as transporting the food. And so maybe, maybe even further. Probably, probably four times as long just because of the traffic and stuff. Um, Jamestown Park is, is less than a mile, well, about a mile and a quarter from my house. And so it's really close. So, yeah. So, you make the I make the choice. I mean, if we were doing it, if we were just cooking on the grill and stuff, I, I, I really liked Gibson myself. I did. I really liked it um, and prefer it. But I'm trying to think about coordinating, carrying food. We're cooking at the house over there back and forth. Okay. Jesse's trying to sell us on, on, on James Town. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Pastor, you, you can do it in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'll be there. I'll be there. All right. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll kind of, you know, I got your feedback. If you guys are cool with James Town, we may lean to James Town simply because of the proximity of getting food there. Um, if we run out at Gibson, it's going to be a 25, 30-minute round trip. At Jamestown, it's going to be a 10-minute round trip, you know. So, you know, boom, boom. You can, so it's, you know, it's just, I think maybe, yes. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I mean, now I'm being, uh, the, no, I know we're just kind of, we're on television. We're, hey, guys. Uh, we're kind of just uh, being open. But this, that's when we get to meet, so I need to talk to you. Um, I mean, one of the great things would be if we had some way of, of getting the oil out of the cooker and hauling the cooker back and forth, we could do everything on site. But that oil is going to be 350 degrees and trying to handle hot oil. It takes hours, hours for that much oil to cool off. So it's just not a real convenient way to get it there. I don't have a food truck. We don't have it on a trailer, you know, that we can, you know, that do all that kind of stuff. We just don't have, yeah. And have it over there before we start. Yeah, I, I agree. I, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Add the first, you know, couple pans of chicken up. 
First batches of cornbread sticks. Ha! And I'm just going to make y'all just, I cooked that weekend before last, I cooked me about it. I cooked me a Boston butt, a couple of butts, and had barbecue at the house. Here we got volunteers for runners to run stuff back and forth while people are cooking and help us set up. So, you know, we're going to have a good time. And we're going to invite people like we always do and get people to come ahead of time. We'll, we'll take pre-orders and that kind of stuff. All right? So the first Sunday of uh, November, um, we are, our teacher work days are weird. It's the Thursday is optional. The Friday is mandatory. So I'll be cooking the pork on Friday, uh, cooking the butts on Friday, getting that ready. On, and this, don't worry about it. I got all these volunteers with me for, for quality control since I could start cooking barbecue. Also, all kinds of folks want to be involved. You know, you don't even have to pay me. I will show up. Um, oh, the night before. All right, Melanie. Anyway, um, so I'll be cooking and doing the barbecue on that Thursday um, because I had to work on that Friday. But that's okay because um, when I was at Parker's in Greenville, a professor from East Carolina came in one day and um, he said, you know, we bought a pound of this and put it in the incubator at the school. He worked in the biology department or something. And, uh, and he said, it took five days for bacteria to grow in it, in the incubator. So if you left it out in the afternoon, don't even worry about it. It sat in the incubator for five days before they could get bacteria to grow in it because of the salt and the vinegar. Yeah, they have all the salt and the vinegar in it. It just preserved it. Boy, that's good going down, though, ain't it? Praise the Lord. All right, it's time to give to, uh, for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Otherwise, um, if you're giving it online with your, um, with your electronic giving, go ahead and, you know, they're going to post that, that slide up there for you to see how to do it. Glory to God. And um, they're working on that, so it, it may be up there. We're always, if you're on your phones, we're always delayed of it coming up. So, but you can go ahead and, and take care of that and get that up there and uh, give electronically. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We love all of you. We thank God for you. Thank God for what you do for the kingdom and for those who come out and help us set up. Oh, bless your hearts. I mean, that's so important. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And um, you know, trust me, I know. You know, I mean, a, a couple of, when we did vacation Bible school, we, the, the remaining people here, we set up that night before and had it all set up that Sunday morning. It's just, it's just a lot to do. There's a lot to do to set up. And we get it done in such a quick amount of time. I mean, um, yeah, we would love to have our other, you know, three-hour chairs in here, but then we'd have to have a trailer and haul them in and have a trailer and that kind of stuff. That's just not feasible at this stage. Hallelujah. All right. You ready to, get, you ready to give? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe, as they give, as they sow into the kingdom of God. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them, and you empty out and pour out blessings on them. They don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, ushers, receive that into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And as soon as that's taken care of, we're going to dismiss all you, you younger guys, children's church, youth, a youth this morning, youth meeting this morning, whether they were uh, in, in this, this room over here, children's church in the other room. You guys are dismissed. Go ahead. Hallelujah. A to the men. Somebody say, A to the men. Glory to God. Get, get your Bibles out and go to John's Gospel, if you will. And we are in the um, 15th chapter. That's where we left off last week. And... Um, Glory to God. We, we like being in the Bible, don't we? Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Last week we left off in John chapter um, 15, verse 12. And just in a real quick recap, you know, Jesus had just finished up in chapter 14. And I know that these are not uh, separated thoughts. They, they do have a continuity to them. You know, um, where he says, you know, but the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. And then he walks out and he begins to talk to him some more and says, I am the true vine, and my husband is the, my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And he that uh, uh, beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth much fruit. And, um, and so he, Jesus is telling us that, you know, we are to abide in him, that we're to draw our, our, our life force, we're, we're to, to 
imitate, we're to act like, we're to live like Jesus. We're, Jesus is our example. Mr. PhD is not your example. Paul said this, follow me as I follow the Lord. They're not, if they're not walking like Jesus, you don't follow them. You know, but we have so many narratives in the earth today. People's idea of what the, the love of God is, people's idea of what it means to be a Christian, people's idea of what it means, you know, um, and all kinds of things, or their opinion about, you know, well, the Bible really didn't mean that. It meant this, you know, and they're great theologians, you know. They're the theologians who listen to somebody else say something, they just adopted it because they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Okay, and, uh, you know, they can just come up with all this crazy stuff. And, um, you know, Bob, Paul wrote and said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved of a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Amen. We're to be good stewards of the word of God. Moreover, stewards, it must be found that a man is faithful. Amen. And so um, we move on down and we get down to verse 10. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as the father's kept, as, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that your joy might, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another. Now, just so you'll know, I'm going to keep saying this because we got, we've got this idea in the body of Christ among certain circles that there's only one commandment in the Bible. That's love. And that is just really a, a misnomer. Uh, it's it's statement. It's a statement like that that's taken in, in in very shallow context. Not really studying out. Not seeing there's other things the Word of God says do that the New Testament says do that are commandments of the Lord. Amen. Now we understand this. Jesus did say that all the commandments are fulfilled in the law of love. Okay. What do you mean? What? Well, if if you love the if you uh, love God with all your heart, your soul, and strength, guess what? You're not going to you're not going to use his name in vain. Amen? Amen? If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to lust after their possessions or commit adultery with their spouse. If you love them the way Jesus loved them. Amen? So the, the, the law of love fulfills the law, or is, you know, it, but it still doesn't mean that, 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 that it negates or abdicates the commandments of God or his moral code. What Jesus said was, it's not that, oh, just love on people, but you can do anything else you want to do. That's not what he said. Love causes you to honor God. If you love God, now remember, the, you know, remember the guy came to Jesus and, and said this to him. Uh, he said, you know, uh, Master, what are the, what are the, uh, what are the commandments, How, you know, and um, which is, which is the greatest commandment. And Jesus said, well, you tell me what, what, what you think. He said, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and your neighbor and yourself. And Jesus said, you've well spoken. For on this hang or hinge or, or, or all the law and the prophets, you know, kind of paraphrase, all the law and the prophets are based on loving God first. Now, they were commanded throughout the Old Covenant to love the Lord their God. Then Jesus came back here in John, the, the 13th, 14th, 15th, the 16th chapter, and says, you know, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I has loved you. Now, he, now, he's not negating or saying that you don't have to love God anymore. See, if you take that and just take that one statement, you can say, well, our, the only commandment is to love people. No, he's, that's not true. Okay? You're to love your neighbors. Jesus is now taking this thing to another level where it's no longer about living out of the law you know, and trying to get to where, you, you know, you can get into paradise or heaven or Abraham's bosom or whatever because you kept all the right statutes. It's now that you have been reconciled to the Father and the love of God's in your heart. You're to act like Jesus. Your, your life is to be lived like him. And so... You know, this is my commandment that you have love one for another. And then he starts verse 13. We're going to pick up this week. Greater love hath no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever, whatsoever I command you. <laughs> Not just the one of loving. Okay? Um, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth, doeth. But I've called you friends for all things I have heard of my Father I've made known unto you. You've not chosen me, I've chosen you. And ordained you 
that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. Praise the Lord. If the war, I'm, I'm sorry. These things I command you that you love one another. Now, one of the things that's going on, we've said this before as we've been teaching along this line. One of the things before going, going on here is um, they love the master. They love Jesus. Okay? They, they love Jesus. We've got people around, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. But Jesus was saying, that's not enough. It's not enough to love God. I love the Lord, I just can't stand them Christians. You're missing the mark. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. I can't stand to be around them. You're the biggest one. How can a man say he loves God and hate his brother? How can you say I love God whom you cannot see and hate your brother who you can see? You're violating the Word of God. Amen. Well, all that matters is that I love Jesus. Nope. As a matter of fact, Jesus came here and said, um, these, th these things I command you that you love one another. Remember earlier he said in this, in this, in this uh, dissertation, that he said, that by this shall all men know you are my disciples, that you have loved one for another. In other words, the, the, the experience and, and the, the new birth, coming into the kingdom of God, being reconciled to the Father, God loving God, God loving you, was so going to radicalize your life that they, they would look at you and go, they love each other. And you wonder why there's so many people who don't want to be in the church because the church is always fighting and splitting. I remember we had a church back where I'm from, and, you know, it was Trinity such and such, such and such church. And they had a split. Moy tore, I mean, it was in the paper. I mean, it was, I mean, they had a really uh, a domineering pastor, according to all the, I, mean, I don't know who he was. But listen, when, when you get a bunch of people who used to run churches on the boards, they think they run the church. I'm just telling you. And they don't like it when somebody comes along and tells them that they can't run the church like that. Well, who do you think you are? I, we'll vote you out. You know? That's just the devil. I said, that's just the devil. Well, they had a big split. It's a big church. They had a big split. And the other group that split and went off down the road started unity, such and such church. I said, that's a lie of the devil. Them folks ain't in unity. The only thing they're unified in is hating the other trinity. Yeah. I'm telling you what's the truth. I mean, you know. And I've seen it all the time and time and time again. When you have church splits, it's not a blessing. Damage is done. Hurt's done. They, they don't even get a fighting devil on them. It takes years to get rid of that thing in the church. It does. Always fighting. Fighting that, you know, just fighting, fighting, fighting. That's just a devil. Jesus said these things I command you that you love one another. Amen. If the world hate you, you, you know it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant's not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If, they've kept, if, you have kept, if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours. But all these things will they do for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If, they, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. If, they, if I had done, not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the world might be, word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. That's the way the devil works. They hate you without a cause. There's a spirit in the earth that hates without a cause. And we got it going on in, political, in, in the political arena now. If you just happen to be on the other side, people hate you. And I, I, just, and I don't mean, and listen, I'm not trying to choose sides here, but I'm going to tell you that that liberal bunch, the, 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 the radical left-wing bunch, hate. I mean, they're venomous. They're so full of hate. I mean, you, you, if, if, if an African-American comes out and says they're pro-Republican or pro-Trump, See what happens to them. 
They're a Tom. They're a sellout. They're this. They're that. I mean, they get, they get, they get absolutely annihilated. They get annihilated. Death threats. Well, don't they have the right to choose who they want to vote for? No, you can't leave. You can't leave. You can't leave their narrative. Or the, the tolerant bunch will kill you over their positions. They come out and get in your view. If you come out and say that homosexuality is a sin, you know, all the ones are out there demanding tolerance and acceptance and equality, well, you, will, you won't get one ounce of tolerance, you won't get one ounce of acceptance, and you won't get one ounce of equality. They will destroy you. They will hang out at your house. And the new net thing is now, if, you are, if, you're in the, if you're in our particular present administration's cabinet or a higher official, now they, they, they're calling people. If you go out in public and go out to a restaurant, they call them. They all come out and protest the restaurant and, and get in their face and spit on them and all kinds of stuff. Just because, they, you know, uh, the thing with, with this president spokesperson, Sandra uh, Huckabee Sanders, just went to have dinner. And before she could get out of the restaurant, the, the people asked her to leave, told her to leave the restaurant. All she was doing was eating. This is just like, this is that spirit. Now, here's the thing. In the world, you're going to have that junk. The problem is, it's in the church. I said it's in the church. Now, come on. Cheering that kind of stuff. Supporting that kind of stuff. Come on now. I mean, they got this thing going on with Disney now. Some guy, some guy does some films, one of the, one of the series of films. Uh, they found some old tweets of his from years ago where he, he basically um, promoted pedophilia, um, rape, and other things. Now, had that been a conservative person, they would have, they, they would have done everything in the world to crucify them publicly, destroy their career, whatever, you know, all this kind of stuff. But this one, the actors are refusing to film the next film if he's not brought, but Disney fired him. But now you got all these people, actors refusing to do the films, and people saying, you know, it's just an old tweet. Amazing how all of a sudden that's just an old tweet. We got people, all they do is dig, go around and dig up old stuff on anybody they can find it on. What I'm saying, this is the spirit of the world. And I'm not trying to say we're going to fix that. And I'm not trying to say, you know, whatever. I, am, I want you to get an understanding. Jesus said they hated me without a cause. That is the way the world is. If you stand for upright, let me, if you come out and say that abortion is, is, is sin, that it's, 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 it's uh, emphasized, they will, I mean, they'll do everything. They, they'll spit on you. They'll throw They'll throw feces and urine on you. I mean, they get absolutely nut bag crazy. And all you're doing is saying that the, the, the unborn has a right to live. This is the spirit of the world. No, that's the spirit of the world. But the church cannot afford to let the spirit of the world infiltrate it. Now, whether you like the politics of a particular party or not, it's irrelevant. We have to have, we have to, you as a citizen need to do, you need to vote. You have a right to your opinion, whatever. All I say is this, your opinion and your right needs to be submitted to God. Hello. And you need to measure it against what the Bible says. Now, quite frankly, I will never be able to vote for a candidate who's pro-abortion or pro-homosexuality. I don't care. I don't care what, what lag, take, label they put on, what tag they put on, what party they're in, what party they're not in. I can't support it. I cannot support it under any circumstance for any reason. And I am not a homophobe, no more than, I, than, than I'm a pedophobe because pedophilia is a sin. It's, it's ungodly. It's disgusting. Okay? But in the church, we have got to let people know we love one another. And we may disagree with somebody, but we got to love one another. Amen? And why am I using politics? Because that right now, that is, the, that is the 
thing, a hot button in our country. It, it's not the hot button in other countries, but it is here. Are you here? There's stuff going on in our country, stuff going on in our nation and that, that has infiltrated and, and captivated the church so that the church is not being the church anymore. Hallelujah. We love you guys. I got to go early. Hallelujah. The church has to be the church. We have to love. Jesus said, if you, uh, these things I command you that you love one another. Amen. And I think it's time that we as a church, and if you're listening out there, and, 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 and if there's your pastors in here at different times and you're watching, we ministries have to get to the point that we, we, we're not a white church or a black church or an Asian church or a Hispanic church or whatever kind of church. We're the church. Amen. Amen. I remember a number of years ago, and, and, and I'm not saying this, I'm not, and y'all know I ain't racist. Not even a little bit. You, Melanie, you looked at me like something. Got her attention, didn't I? But we were in our, we were in our home church, and we were, it was back when we were in the old building, and you know, we had theater chairs in this old uh, hardware store. And um, this girl's mama came. She was, she was a student in East Carolina. And she came up, and somehow or another, she took over the service. And she came over there, and she came up to me, and she took, and said, and you white people don't know how to worship God. <laughs> and something was going all over me. That's a racist statement. And that's exactly what she did to me. Just rubbed her hands all over my face about us white people didn't know how to worship God. We may have a cultural approach that's different, but it doesn't mean we don't know how to worship God. But if you're white, it doesn't mean that you do know how to worship God because you're African American. Hello? It doesn't mean because it's not classical or, you know, music that it's God and that if it's, you know, has have African themes that it, it, it isn't. That, none of that's true. And so the, the church has to be the church, and we have to recognize each other as part of the body of Christ. And we have to love one another. Amen. I said amen. And our churches should be teaching love one for another instead of being political pulpits for our ideology. Amen. Can I get one holy grunt out there? Can I get somebody to stand up and say, help me, Jesus? Amen. These things I command you that you love one another. And he goes on and talks about the world hating you. He says, um, they hated me without a cause. When we walk with God, they'll hate you without a cause. We got people who won't make a cake for a homosexual couple because it violates their conscience, and it does. I understand that. There, there are some places that are that are, that are looking at, that are looking to uh, legalize bestiality. I know that's disgusting. So when they come in and want to put a picture of their horse and the, and and the, and the groom that they're going to get married on the cake, are, are they going to be required to make that? I know y'all disgusted, but let's, I mean let's let's be real. This is where it goes. This is where the world goes. It becomes more and more depraved in its mindset and its actions. But because this person refused to make it, they did everything they could to destroy them. They, 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 just, they just won the Supreme Court case. They won. But it about destroyed them doing it. They have a right not to make a cake for a homosexual couple because it violates their religious conscience. Go, and people will go past everybody to make these people do that because they hate them without a cause. They want to destroy them. Their goal is to destroy them. Okay? I'll make you a cake, but I won't make one that celebrates your homosexual marriage. I'll be glad to make you a cake, but it will not have all that on there. Go to court. No. If I go into a place that doesn't want my business, I'll go find another place. It's fine. You know? Well, 
Thank you, Jeff, for the information there. <laughs> I was talking about my father-in-law father used to price electric jobs, and ones he didn't want to do, he'd price them so far out that he wouldn't get the job, and they had to give it to him anyway. And then he last all the way to the bank. Well, okay, <laughs> you really didn't want to do it, but I'll do it for that. We as believers, we in the church, have got to cross over out of the world's control of our thinking, of our actions, of, of how we respond to things, and do like Jesus, and be like the Lord. It doesn't mean you, you, you leave your, you know, your, your citizenship at the door and you don't have it. It doesn't mean you don't go into it when you go vote, or you don't vote at all. It means that you are able to compartmentalize that so that you have a responsibility as a citizen to vote and to vote properly, but you don't let that affect how you treat people. You don't let that affect how you treat your brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't use it as an excuse to refuse to pray for the leaders of your country when the Word of God commands you to. Amen? Sure got quiet in this frozen, chosen church. No, you're not the frozen, chosen. You're all the live wires, aren't you? Hallelujah. Then he goes on and says, but when the comforter has come, I will send from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father. He shall testify of me, and you shall also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. These things have I, verse six, chapter 16, have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Now, that phrase, be offended, the margin says made to stumble. I wrote these things so you won't stumble. Not walking in love, you'll stumble. Are y'all here? You stop walking in love with your brothers and sisters because you disagree with them politically. You disagree with their cultural, uh, how they culturally run their church. You understand what I'm saying? You know, you're, you're used to white folk church. You're used, used to black folks church. You know, there's a different culture. We, we have different cultures. And that, you know, and, and I'm not going to say they're either one's right or wrong. I can't say either one's right or wrong. Okay? As a matter of fact, I probably go in both, in any, any kind of church and find all kinds of stuff that, that's, that's not biblical. It's a cultural thing. White churches, black churches, Latino churches. I mean, we find stuff that's just not biblical and how we do certain things. Okay? So we, we, have to, we have to get past all that. You know, some of it just don't matter. Now, you, and that, now you, 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 you uh, pasty white folk ain't never been in a service where they had the, 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 the uh, bounce, to, you know, the bounce team. The one that gathers around everybody as they get in the Holy Ghost and start bouncing off all the walls, and they lock arms, and they keep them from getting hurt. You know, they pick a circle around them. You know, they're like a bumper guard. You know, and they're running into this one, and they're running into that one, but they don't run into the pew, and they don't run into the wall. They don't get hurt. Was that scriptural? Well, I don't see it in the Bible, but okay, so what? Neither is looking like a statue while you're at church. See, we're talking about cultural things that, that, that don't really matter. It doesn't make you better and it doesn't make you lesser because that cultural difference... The thing is, we're, we're, to, we're, to, we're to grow in God, we're to grow in grace, we're to operate the church and, and, and have things in the church that the Bible teaches to have in the church, the gifts of the Spirit manifestation. I mean, you know, but who says you're supposed to sing, you know, three, you know, now listen, if you grew up in a, in a standard church, you would come in there, they'd have hymnals, they had the number up on the board, you would sing the first and the last stanza. Might have a special in there, you know, have, have the Sunday school superintendent come up and tell you how many people are in Sunday school this morning. Okay, and they have up there how much how much money came in to add the Sunday school classrooms. Y'all remember the boards? Now I don't know. Is, did y'all have that in African American churches? Okay, you know the boards with the money, for the offerings from the Sunday school and the attendance and all that kind of stuff. We don't have anything in the Bible about that. Now that that, that. send the brute squad after you if you didn't tithe this year. You know. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing scripture that tells us to do that. But then we come over to the charismatic churches and we're just loosey goosey. I mean, anything goes. And we don't have any, anything that controls anything. Are y'all here? You know, and then you got, you got somebody in there that you know, gives a word every week that, you know, it's, 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 it's as anointed as a wet dish rack. I mean, we, we had you test them every week. They start giving a word, and it's like, oh, my goodness. That's, that's not the Holy Ghost. They just wanted to be heard. They thought they knew, you know. And, you, you know, you let things go. Eventually, you have to say, okay, listen, you, may, you might want to make sure you're hearing from heaven. We had one guy used to in our church who used to say amen all the time. It is deep, resonating voice. I mean, it made Brother Bill look like a tenor. We, we used to call him Brother Amen. Except sometimes he would say Amen at the worst times. <laughs> you don't want that to be so be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the devil's been knocking your feet where your head was two seconds before. So be it. Because that's, that's what Amen means. You know, I mean, then you got people come in. You had Brother Spoons come into church. He's going to play the spoons. You ever seen people play spoons in church? Bring two spoons, turn them backwards, and, and, and use them like a, a percussion instrument, you know? And the washboard. Y'all y'all doesn't see stuff I ain't seen. The what now? The bird man. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> what, what, but what, what's our point here? We are the kingdom of God. We're the family of God. We're going to have cultural differences. Listen, I've traveled around the world. I've been, I've been in Thailand. I've been all over Western Europe. I've been in the islands. You know, and as much of a difference in the cultures of how they do things, the, there still should be the same common denominator. We're the family of God. Amen? Let me tell you something. You're not going to take your pipe organ down to Dominican Republic out on a street crusade and, and get people's attention. Who we want to? Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's high church music. We, we even have terms for it, high church music. What makes it high church music? It's the proper kind. Oh, the Brits... You know, that stuff, come, that stuff came out of the, the Eurocentric mindset. All right? High church music. How many, how many of you ever heard the music, uh, music style jazz, genre jazz? You know, my son educates me. You know, do you know that jazz is a combination of African, African rhythms and classical music? That classical music, it took the the strictness of classical music and the, uh, the orchestration and everything that added jazz, that added, brought in the African rhythms, which brought a flexibility to it, and you ended up with jazz. The underlying, the underpinning theory behind jazz is classical music with a mixture of African drum rhythms. Well, wow. Well, what makes any sound right? when we learn to walk in love and love one another and accept the cultural differences, then we all get bettered. We grow. We flourish. We don't psych out our air that we're the right ones, we're the only right ones, and nobody else can be the right one because I'm the right one. That's just stupidity. Hello. And we can all flourish together. Now, in our country, we have a, we have a political culture. Now, it's, it's known or stated, basically, that the Republican Party is an old white man's party. The Democratic Party is, and, and I, I don't agree. I, don't, I know there's, there's African-American Republicans. I know there are. They don't, a lot of times don't like to talk about it because they get crucified. You know, 
you know, and that the Democratic Party tends to be the party of, of uh, minorities and this kind of stuff. And we, we've kind of classified it that way. And then when you come into the church, that's what you're supposed to be, and we, that's how we preach. If we're a white church, we preach this way. If we're a black church, we preach this way. If we're a Latino church, we preach that way. On our politics, when really we should be preaching righteousness. Amen. What is right? What is righteous according to the Word of God? Now, remember the last election when they were doing the, they were doing the, the, um, can't, the uh, voting here? And I just stood up and I said, listen, you don't vote according to a party. You vote according to your conscience and according to the Word of God. According to the Word of God, you know, that, that guy's your conscience. Guy came in and shut the door and said, you're making political speech and all this mess. Okay? I'm not making political speech. Political speech is vote for so-and-so. And I said about, I talked about abortion, you know, you know, sucking the baby out of the womb with a, with a, with a whatever, and they went crazy. They went crazy. I'm not making political speech. I'm not telling you to vote Republican or Democrat. I'm not telling you not to vote Republican or Democrat. I'm saying that as a Christian, we have to vote independent of any party platform. How do we see the Word of God on this subject, and how should I care, conduct myself as a citizen of heaven and of a country? Amen? And can't say that either one's 100% right. I see stuff happening in, in, in the Republican Party that I think are disgusting. I see stuff happening in the Democratic Party I think are disgusting. I see libertarians I think are disgusting. I see the communists are just out there. I, think, I don't see anything they're doing that's good. Because they'll, they'll kill America. They'll ki now, they won't just kill America. They'll kill the church in America. Because the religion of communism is atheism. The state is God. It is evil. Socialism is one step away. If you think you want socialism as a Christian, you're crazy. Because they will destroy the church. I'm just telling you. We can't afford that. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm out there. I'm out there so deep. I don't know how I'm going to get back. <laughs> Jesus, help me get back. But these things that are written on you that you wouldn't stumble. They'll put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh, whosoever killeth you, think they do a service, God's service. Haven't you heard people saying stuff in public? You know, God wouldn't do that. This is how we love people. We love people no matter how they act or what they are. God made them that way, made them a homosexual. God made them a pedophile. Made God made them this. No, he didn't. And these things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you will remember that I told you them. And these things I said unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way. And none of you ask me, where, where do you go? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Paraclete, the Holy Ghost, Will not, depart, will not come unto you, but if I depart from you, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. <coughs> Excuse me. He'll do what? He'll convict the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. Let me say this. If you're hooked up to the prince of the world when he gets judged, you get it too. If, if Dick walks up and is laying on the ground, or he picks up a, a high-voltage wire and sitting there going, burr, 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 and I go up and grab Dick, guess what? I'm going to be going, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> Hello? I will receive the same penalty because I was connected to him. Okay? I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not, not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he'll show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he receives the mind, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, he shall take of mine, and will show it unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go unto the Father. Then the disciples start talking. He just made that statement. They're like, huh? You know? 
It's kind of like those old philosophers of the 60s, you know. Why do they call the grass green? Oh, that's deep. When you're on drugs, anything is deep, you know? And what is this he saith to, to us? A little while you shall see me, and again a little while and you shall not see, you shall see me, because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this he saith? A little while we cannot tell what he saith. And Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves of what I said? A little while you shall not see me, and again a little while you shall see me. And uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow hath be turned into joy. Woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy what a man, and for, for the joy that a man is born into the world. But ye there, but now ye therefore hath sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy shall no man take for you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. And in... Um, Hitherto, I'm sorry. Hitherto, if you ask nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the, the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you them openly uh, or plainly of the Father. And that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Now, folks, how, I mean, how, how, much, how much help do we need? You don't go to a priest to get them to ask God for you. You don't go to a pastor. He said that day you won't ask. When you ask, I'm not, I'm not going to go and ask the Father for you. Hello? For the Father himself loveth you because you've loved me and hath believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And the disciples out that you speak plainly, no Proverbs. Now are we sure that you know all things and need not that any man should ask you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus said, do you believe? Behold, the hour cometh and is now come that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now this is the end of his address to the disciples. In chapter 17, he moves into his great intercessory prayer for the church. But throughout this thing, he's made an, over, an ongoing point, loving one another, loving God, following him, doing the way he wants it done. Amen. His own, his overwhelming, overriding theme throughout all this is loving one another. As he loved us. We got to lay some junk aside. Come on, church. We've got to lay some junk aside. It is hard for us to lay stuff aside when you're angry. And when we're so angry about politics and about the state of things, we don't pray about it. Facebook has become a vent system and a distraction from doing something biblical about things. And people say stuff on Facebook they would never say to a person's face. Hello? If you were in this church and you found out somebody was a Democrat and you're a Republican, you would not walk up to them and call them a Democrat. Yeah, I did say it. But that's what people call people. Hello? Hello? You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it to their face. Why do we feel like we can do it on Facebook? We didn't say it to them. We just did it in general. There you go. Y'all here? We as the church have to. I, I remember um, I was at camp meeting the year that Ray McCauley, you know, apartheid was falling in Africa. It was, they were, they were, on, the, they were on the precipice of, of getting it um, outlawed. Now, if you didn't know what apartheid was, apartheid was that the, um, that the Africans, native Africans, now you've got to understand that in South Africa there's not 
just African American or Africans. There's Zulus, there's Congos, there's Coloreds. Now, that means, see, see, see her, he go. in Africa, it means something different. Actually, it meant that you were mixed race with white. You were coloreds. Okay, you weren't, you weren't pure African, you weren't pure white, you were, so you were colored. That, that's their terminology. So you say it here, and it can be it, it's considered um, racist or inappropriate language. There, it was, it was an actual race, and they referred to them as colors. Okay? You had Dutch. I mean, you had the English influence. You had all these different things. Now, in apartheid, if you were of African descent, you were not a whole person. And or the whites had more or had a higher number of voting points for voting. Now you remember that remember um, under under the slavery and, and the, the initial following or during slavery that an African was considered what three fifths of a person? Is that what it was? So they could never make up enough to be a whole person to vote. Okay. Well Oh representatives for the house and stuff. Okay. So they counted they counted all the slaves by three fifths. All right. Um, thank you for the history lesson there. Right. Okay. So it's one, of, one of the things to just keep uh, empowering the north, northern states, the, fr the free states. Okay. Well, not all the northern states are free states. Go study your history. We have people in the North in the Civil War who had slaves that fought against the South. So two or three states, Maryland, um, some of the border states. So Maryland was one of them. Uh, there was, uh, Ohio was one of them, I think, and there was another one. Maybe West Virginia. Um, uh, so I'm not sure which one uh, was. Anyway, they instituted, where, where, you know, Africans were only three-fifths of a person. I don't say that. But folks, the slavery was evil. It's evil no matter what. It's, e it's evil when the Egyptians held the G uh, Jews in slavery. It's evil when the whites held uh, Africans in slavery in America. It's, it's, e it's evil when African tribes hold other African tribes in slavery. It's evil. It's a horrible thing to own another person, to, to take, think you have the right to own a person and demand they, they work in servitude no matter what, and, and that, you, that you're, they're your property. You treat, you treat them like a dog. Probably dogs treat dogs better. It's evil. In our country, it was, was three-fifths, you know, for, uh, up until the Civil War was over and slavery was declared illegal, you know, and then, then they tried to do things to keep slaves from being able to vote. It took three amendments or four amendments to get it cleared up enough so that they could, 13th, 14th, and 15th, okay? Because the states were coming in and making laws that were contrary to the 13th Amendment, and so they had to come back and add another amendment to overdo that. It took them three amendments to completely clear it, okay? It, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a book of bear. Well, back to South Africa. So... Slavery is not limited to the American um, shame. It's gone on in history throughout cultures around the world, and it still and it still goes on today. Okay, it still goes on today. Now, in South Africa, apartheid was not slavery; it was just a caste system to keep certain people empowered. Okay, and when um, when was it? Was it Tutu? That Nelson Mandela. Uh, he 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 was a political dissident prisoner for a number of years. But they they were um, they were you know looking to undo this. Now here's the thing. Ray McCauley had started Rama South Africa, and then he was a former Mister South Africa in in like the the, the weightlifting things. He, he competed in the, in, in the Mister Universe or Mister Olympic, whatever it was. But he was Mister South Africa, weightlifter. Bodybuilder, bodybuilder. And his churches, they had, they had churches all over, and they would, have the, they would have the Zulus and the Congas. And you notice it. Now, I could go over there. I wouldn't be able to tell you a Zulu from a Conga. They knew. And they would kill each other. You're talking about African on African crime. They hate each other because of their tribes. So you, but the government 
heard about his church, and they came to visit, and they saw Zulus and Congos and Coloreds and Dutch and whites. You know, whites were something different than, than Dutch. All in there holding hands, worshiping God together. Right in the middle of this horrible political climate. And they called Macaulay to the president's and with meeting with high officials in the country and said, you have the answer. We don't have the answer. We can't politically figure this out, but you've got the answer. What was it? The love of God. It bridged. Who knows how long the Congos and the Zulus hated each other. And, the, and one of the biggest fears was that if they completely did away with apartheid and turned the government over, there would be absolute bloodshed in the streets between those two tribes. And, and it was a real fear. It was a, it was a legitimate fear. Huh? And the Africans would go after the whites as well. I mean, it was, it was just, there was a fear of absolute mass bloodshed. And some people try to go, well, that would, that would be fair. No. That's not fair. That's not how you do it. Okay? And I was at camp meeting in 19 whatever. And Ray McCauley was preaching that night. And he said, I must, he says, as soon as I finish, I must leave. I just got a call. The, the, the negotiations have broke down, and they've called me home. They wanted us to pray. They called me home to help because they knew he had the answer. He became integral. Now, you don't, you, you, you don't hear that Ray McCauley was integral in helping eliminate apartheid in Africa, but he was. The media didn't play that. The media didn't come in and talk about how the, the, the people who were Christians helped change this. They'll never do that. It's like that plane that, that's landed without anybody getting killed, and, they say, and the news media, NBC, came out and said, that was no big miracle. It wasn't a miracle. You had a plane crash and nobody got killed? Nobody? And then you don't get on time. That was no miracle. They all did the right thing. <laughs> you, you, you see, you know, the world's godless. But Ray McCauley went home. And it wasn't long after that, apartheid came, and they did not have the bloodshed. They weren't butchering people in the streets. Are you here? It didn't happen. Not because there was great government wisdom, but because they turned to, to, to the man of God, and he preached, and those people talked to their people, and they had they were able to stop something from happening that would have happened because they had love one for another. The Zulus and the Congos and the Coloreds and the Dutch and the whites loved each other. In the midst of an evil system, it's an evil system. It's an ungodly system. But they love one another. And they set the example on how to walk in freedom and liberty and how to do this, that where they weren't Zulus or Congos or Coloreds or Whites or Dutch, they were believers. He had 400 satellite churches in South Africa. Their influence kept a nation from dissolving into absolute anarchy and bloodshed because by this shall all men know you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. Amen? Amen. If we do not make this happen, starting with the church, now I'm, paid for that. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being doomsday, but I'm telling you, if we don't make some turns in the church, we're going to have another civil war in this country. The winds of it are blowing. It's being staged. It's being set up. It's, it's being orchestrated. The powers that be. Because they hate America. They're all after one world power and government. And it's not just the Democrats. It's, there's Republicans involved in it because they will all be excessively rich and in control. And if the church does not step up to the plate 
and say, enough of this already, and be the, the standard bearer, I fear for our country. Which means that the gospel won't, will be limited in reaching the earth. We have to be the light and love one another. And lay aside these stupid differences. There's not my president, 45. Last one was, not my president, that's 44. Not my president. Well, are we going to keep doing this every time the, the different party gets in office? So you know what happens when you say, I'm not my president? You don't have to pray for him because you don't recognize their authority. God does. That's why you're commanded to pray for him. Why did he say pray for him? That you might lead a quiet and peaceable life. Thank you for your enthusiastic response. It is true anyway. Father, we, we thank you. We love your people. We trust that you'll take these things we said over the past weeks, pierce their hearts, those that live, they're here, those that have been watching by the Internet, and speak to them about making adjustments and changes in attitude in disposition in regards to how they treat one another, how they treat their brothers and sisters, whom they may disagree with. And that we exemplify the love of Jesus, the love of God in the earth, so that all men will know we're Christians. Because we have love one for another. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Until next time, until next time we love you. God bless you. And remember that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you next time.